All right, beef and onion pocket pies. They are very, very popular over here. Um, and they are eaten, probably uh, as many are eaten cold as are eaten hot. It's a puff pastry pocket pie. And we traditionally make it with uh, fairly lean beef. This is 10% fat beef. And uh, I've got a medium sized onion, which I've cut up into small pieces, as you see here. So I won't waste any more time. I'm going to get on and start cooking this. Okay, I'm just going to drop in a little bit of lard. Uh, you can drop in a, about a tablespoon of cooking oil. I'll do the same effect. And then as soon as that gets hot, I'm going to drop in my uh, minced beef, my ground beef. Just going to swirl that around, get it melted down. So about a tablespoon of uh, either lard or uh, cooking oil and into that goes my beef and I want to get that broken up so I'm going to use my little gadget both uh, beef and onion and cheese and onion pocket pies are very popular over here um, and, or, or just uh, steak pies they're quite popular too there's a major retail tra chain in the UK called Greggs and they sell these uh, these sorts of pies and um, I think they do rather well selling them as well because they're uh, just about everywhere in the UK now and we want to stir to brown that break it up stir to brown it so as you stir um, fry it as you're breaking it down you'll see it ships off a lot of moisture and that moisture is not desirable what we want to do with that is let that cook off until it starts to fry again that's the key with this mince once it starts to fry again your mince will try to uh, stick to the bottom of the pan but this takes a while it'll take a couple of minutes a few minutes so I'll get back to you when that's ready so once again I've got Bradley Bennett to thank for helping me uh, bring this uh, video to you. So thanks again Bradley, um, you're really helping, thanks very much my friend. So as it starts to fry again you, you start to hear it turning into a much more aggressive frying sound. And it's at this stage that we can introduce our onion. And that does smell wonderful, boys and girls. That smells really good. This is a very aromatic stage and it gives off the greatest smell, really gorgeous. Uh, speaking of aromatics, I'm gonna get in some, uh, some black pepper. I like a lot. Uh, you, you use as much as you like, but I like quite a lot of that. So the secret is to keep it stirring and frying and to keep it off the bottom of the pan. And as the meat and onion start to caramelise now, it's giving off a really nice smell. And it's at this stage that we can consider adding some water to it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water until it comes to barely to the top of the meat. And then I'm going to reduce the heat down really low and let that simmer for about an hour. At this stage I'm going to add a single uh, beef stock cube or an oxo cube if you've got one. Make sure you dissolve it completely. You don't want any lumps of stock cube in there. And just let that cook out now. So turn it down to the simmer. Let it cook out. You can do a little taste test at this time if you like. Oh, that's wonderful. The, the stock cube just added just the right amount of salt. I don't think I need to add any more at this stage. Okay, cover and simmer. Don't forget, if you like what you see, please like subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments and uh, don't forget to share it with your friends thanks it all helps uh, enormously uh, during these tough times so 
Thank you in advance. All right, let's have a look. It's really good. Um, I'm going to give that a quick stir, see where I am. Now, I want to thicken this, and the best way to do that is with ordinary flour. And uh, I find I've done it with corn flour in the past, and, and I'm afraid it, um, it doesn't last long, the corn flour eventually just breaks down and turns to liquid again so I, I, I find I have much more success with ordinary um, plain flour with uh, all-purpose flour and I'm going to introduce it direct into the sauce and I want to put in about about a tablespoon because I want to thicken this sauce and it's going to be thicker than you would probably use for any other purpose because it's going in as a pie filling and that pie filling is intended to be that pie is intended to be eaten either cold or hot so I'll get that in and stir it and I want it to thicken really really nice and thick because don't forget it's a, it's, it's a pie filling it is not a sauce don't, don't get the idea we're making it into a meat sauce because we're not in a classic English mince and onion filling, there's no tomato. You can add a little bit of tomato if you're a, an addict. A bit of tomato puree, about a teaspoon, would lift the sauce up nicely. But I'm doing it the traditional way, so it's got no tomato in it. It's very simple. Just salt, pepper onions, flour and mince. Really very simple. So that's nice and thick now and uh, you'll see it looks like that now so when that actually cools down it will be fairly solid and that's the very next step folks because before we can use that effectively we need to cool it down. So you can spread it out on a, on a plate or a baking sheet if you like to make it uh, cool down quicker but you want it uh, cooled down before you start to use it. Well there you go, I've got the sheet rolled out and as you see it's quite capacious. Uh, my meat filling is cooled off nicely. I'll just put that to one side for now. And the first thing I want to do is cut this sheet in half. That's good. And then I'll just put that out of the way. And then what I want to do is just lay the sheet out because what we're really doing is we're folding this over the filling. So to that end I'm going to take some of my filling and at this stage you can work out exactly how much you want to put on but just put it on the middle and on the front end like this. Now if you're buying these in the shop that's about as much meat as you're going to get in them. But we don't want to do that, do we, boys and girls? We want to have nice ones with plenty of filling. And as you notice, I'm leaving an area around the side. I think we can get a bit more on that one. Because we want a nice, juicy pie. Down this way, spread it out nicely, leaving that space at the side two or three centimetres, about an inch. Right, at this stage, I need to wet the edges. Just with water, plain simple. Wet along the edges, along the margin, like that. And then we just bring the top sheet over the filling to meet with the edges of the pie. And it's at this stage you want to be expelling all the air from the inside of your pie. And then we go along it with a fork, like this. It's not sticking. Try wetting the fork. Yeah, that works. 
and we go along the outside of the pie with the tines of the fork engaging in each other making sure you keep dipping your fork in the wet that way you won't have that problem so once you've got to that you need to just trim up the edges of your pie and what I like to do is take it about halfway along like that just cut that away as you do just going to go over that again that bit and then I just want to trim it up again just make sure that all the sides are nice take off the sharp corners I mean this is just trimming but and then what I want to do is just make a couple of diagonal cuts about a finger width apart not cutting through the pie skin all the way just a striation along it like that now I'm just going to give it a brush with an egg yolk you can use whole egg but yolk produces better results and then brush it evenly over the pie you don't want it pulling anywhere you just want it evenly over the pie just preparing these makes me hungry because now I <laughs> how good they are so and anywhere the egg pulls just brush it out so there we have it that's the pie ready so that now goes on to a baking sheet and that will bake in the oven about 40 minutes bearing in mind the insides already cooked so uh, 40 minutes at um, 180 degrees or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and uh, we'll see what it looks like oh yeah <laughs> oh, I do love pies how nice is that be careful you, the instinct is to tuck into them straight away but they are piping hot and uh, you can let them cool down a little bit before you eat them all right now for the reveal if you can hear any clinking in the background that's my brother tucking into his pie so let's cut this open and see what we got oh yeah look at that gorgeous <laughs>